Professor uh, Deb Roy, Professor with Center of Policy Research, joins us live from Delhi. Professor Deb Roy, always a delight to have you back on ET. Now, Professor Deb Roy, let's take the clock back. Three years ago, when UPA came back to power, uh, it was a near-perfect scenario for them. The world was recovering from a financial crisis, commodity prices were low, interest rates were, man were manageable, and momentum was clearly on the side of India. Why do you think UPA2 has failed to deliver? Well, I think there are several reasons for that. But the fundamental reason is a reluctance to look inwards and um, uh, look at our inability to implement reforms. The tendency has been too much to blame what is happening in the rest of the world, the global financial crisis, and now blame Greece. And what is the core issue? The core issue fundamentally is that there has been an increase in public expenditure, a dramatic increase in public expenditure. It has been going on since 2004. It has accentuated under UPA2, and that increase in public expenditure, which is unproductive, has led to a widening of fiscal deficits, it's pumped liquidity into the system, and it has led to inflationary problems. This has been spliced with the fact that the supply side is completely inelastic because in area after area, zero reforms have been introduced. Mm. Vivek, hi, morning. Let's talk about the more... Uh recent sort of, uh, you know, news topics. The finance minister presenting the white paper on black money yesterday in parliament, which has been ridiculed by the opposition calling it a bikini. What is your reading of the solutions offered in the white paper? Well, it says nothing whatsoever. Because uh, initially, when there was talk of the white paper, I thought there would be some kind of an estimate because all kinds of figures were being bandied around. And all this white paper does is to quote the Global Financial Integrity Report. Now, in talking about black money, um, uh, there are two kinds of issues. One is the stock. And while it is important to address the stock, it's also important to address the flow which leads to the creation of new black money. Now, all it talks about is things like fast-track dispute, fast-track courts. It talks about amnestic schemes. These are not really the key issues at all. Mm -hmm. But the white paper, Vivek, also talks about uh, or rather lists tax amnesty scheme for tax uh, evaders, which is being seen as unfavorable for the honest, uh, honest taxpayers. What are your views on this particular issue? Well, there's quite a bit of literature on tax amnesty schemes across the globe. And there are, there are situations where they have worked and there are situations where they have not worked. And India, there have been other kinds of tax amnesty schemes in India earlier. They haven't really worked. And the critical issue is, one, is this scheme likely to be perceived as close-ended or is it likely to be open-ended? Secondly, what is the kind of penalty that is being imposed through this amnesty scheme as opposed to the rates which are being paid by people who are not evading taxes, the point that you already mentioned. More importantly, how is this tax amnesty kind of scheme going to be backed up with enforcement mechanisms? And unfortunately, as I said in India, the rest of it has never really happened. So I'm extremely skeptical about any tax amnesty scheme bringing out large amounts of money. On a side note, I am somewhat skeptical about the kinds of figures that are floating around about the money that's sitting there in Swiss banks. I don't think a large chunk of it is sitting there. I think most of it has been rerouted back to India and plowed into land and real estate markets and capital markets. Mm -hmm. Let's uh, also discuss um, another important topic, I would say a touchy topic, which is gold. According to Government of India estimates, nearly 40% of India's GDP currently is parked in gold. Do you think it's high time Government of India should consider a gold scheme or a gold bond? Well, yes, but that 40% figure I don't buy. But I think the point to note is much of this gold is in the form of, of jewelry and therefore it is not readily marketable. Until it is not readily marketable, it is not liquid and therefore it is not a productive use of gold. So gold bonds, yes, certainly. But the more important issue is that how do we make this gold attractive? How do we make it liquid? How do we make this investment a productive asset? 
And again, I would like to mention that one of the reasons why a lot of the money is now flowing into gold is because some of these investors have become extremely wary about both capital markets and land and real estate markets. Mm. Vivek, another point in the white paper talks about reforms in natural resources sector, promotion of debit and credit cards in place of cash transactions, making electronic registration a prerequisite for property transactions. And, the, you know, these are the, some of the steps which are being suggested. But they don't quite look like long-term solutions. Well, they're not long-term solutions and they're just looking at very, very small pieces in the jigsaw. For example, uh, I, I think a large amount of black money generated because of electoral reforms, uh, because of the lack of electoral reforms and the nature of electoral funding. On land and real estate, we have the land uh, uh, bill pending, which will increasingly increase intervention and do away with market determined prices. One of the reasons why there is such, an such a large amount of illegitimate transaction going on in land markets is high stamp duty rates because you do not re uh, leave things to markets and also the surplus rates in urban areas. If you freed up the market, if you made stamp duties reasonable, or if you completely eliminated stamp duties as one of the original Vijayakalka task force reports had suggested, I think you would do away with this. On natural resources, the fundamental issue is that there is too much of discretion, and discretion inherently leads to abuse. And by natural resources, I mean all kinds of natural resources, not just the hard ones, but even soft ones like spectrum. So, Professor, what is one big thing which to your mind is, is, is a necessity, it is need of the hour? Animistry scheme, uh, FDI in retail or gold bonds? I would say none of those. I would say that if one takes care of the reforms, and there is a long list of this, we would stop adding to the flow. And as I said, the flow is much more important than the stock, although invariably debates, particularly in Parliament, get focused on the, on the stock. So we need to look at those kinds of reform issues, like the land market issue that I mentioned, both rural and urban. We need to look at electoral funding. Those are the kinds of things one would like to get done.